I'm Alma Pinkham and I will be the facilitator today. If we can look at our program for today, um, our opening remarks will be done by CIPC's Commissioner, Advocate Rory Bolle. This will be followed with an inter overview of enhancements for companies and CTs. The presenter will be Advocate uh, Krista Kloko, the Head of the Companies and Closed Corporations Unit. Thereafter, Mr. Vujani Nkogla, the Head of the Directors, Practitioners and Members Unit, will do an overview of enhancements for directors and members. Then Mr. Louis Miller from the Finance Unit will provide an overview of enhancements for fee payments and refunds. This will be followed with Mr. Tabohuma Sakali from the ICT unit, who will do a demo on some of the changes. Lastly, we will have a question and answer session. You are welcome to post your questions related to today's topic only. We will only respond to those questions. If you have every, any other questions or queries that is not related to today's topic, please log in um, uh, on our website and do an inquiry uh, on the inquiry system or send a message on the CIPC Facebook with Messenger. We want to make you aware that the webinar is being recorded and will remain on CIPC YouTube channel as well as CIPC Facebook should you wish to um, view it again at a later stage. With that, I'm going to hand over to Advocate Rory Bolo. Thank you very much. On our major e-services and biz portal um, transactions. So the one thing that we are known for at the CIPC and in terms of our modernization journey is our improvement to the ease of doing business. Uh, we do this because we want to be an entity that remains relevant, but we also want to be accessible to our clients in multiple ways. Uh, the one thing that we have at the CIPC in terms of our strategy, is something that we call the multi-channel approach, is that we try and assist our clients where we find them. Uh, we have uh, walking centers, uh, we have transactional websites, we have mobile sites, we're moving into APIs, uh, we have chatbots, and we try and utilize various services, even in the artificial uh, intelligence space. But when it comes to the issue about our major volume transactions, we have uh, a strategy of continuously improving on them and making them better for our clients as the years go by. You know, we're moving into new generations um, and they consistently want uh, a speedier service and they also want an enhanced uh, a, a delivery of, 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 of transactions when they're dealing with the CIPC. So we have to continuously improve on this vein and today is just a rollout of one of, of those particular services, uh, namely uh, our, our e-services and our portal space. We at the CIPC consistently review our strategy. Uh, we consistently look for areas that we can reduce red tape uh, and bureaucracy when dealing with the entity. And therefore, when we look at changing our systems, we do understand that it comes with a lot of change management initiatives and it comes with a lot of discussion and improvement uh, in terms of dialogue with our clients. So when we see what we're going to be rolling out in the coming week, uh, we, we certainly value your input to make the, ser the service better. Uh, we would want you to, 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 to look at the service and see areas, especially on usability, where we can try and improve. We never ever say that we get everything right at the CIPC, but we certainly try to make your experience a better one. So we're going to value the fact that you're going to continuously engage with our managers. Uh, we will continuously engage with our IT developing development team and basically deal with how we're going to improve on your experience ultimately because your experience uh, especially those in the company secretarial space, the legal and accounting space who deal with the multitude of clients require that of us. So we have heard you and we want to continue to make sure that we continue to serve you so that you can serve your clients better. But not only that, we also want to make it easier for the one-to-one -one client who wants to access us in terms of 
many of our clients is a once-off transaction, for example, in the company registration space, and we want that to be a pleasurable one. We don't want to have a lot of complexity because simplicity is what we try and live by at the CIPC. So we're going to have some key advance, uh, enhancements in the automation and simplification space. Um, you're going to look forward to also an updated uh, automated director change process. Reduction of paper is vitally important for us at the CIPC, but not only that, verification and authentication of data as a regulator is what we strive for. We triangulate many of our data sources. Um, you all know that one of our major identity, major, uh, identity sources is the Department of Home Affairs, which is the trusted source. Uh, we have been experiencing a multitude of problems with them over the last year to 18 months. Uh, we have not rested on our laurels as far as that is concerned. We are currently dealing with a workaround to those of you who experience our outage on a daily basis because of our connectivity to DHA goes out. But our development team has uh, developed what we would seem to be a seamless experience now when it comes to outages of home affairs. We're not saying that we're going to be doing a reduction as far as um, uh, um, authenticating of identity is concerned, but we will certainly deal with the customer experience in ensuring that if home affairs and our link goes down, we will continue to transact with us and we do verifications by way of two ways. One is that you are very, if you're verified upfront where the DHA link is done in terms of uh, past verifications, we will store some of that data and we'll do it to verify you going forward. Alternatively, if you're a new customer and the link is down, we'll continue to uh, transact with us. And when the link comes up later on in the day or at night, we will then do a verification of you and therefore control that particular process. These are some of the enhancements we're doing in order for us to make sure that you do not experience a multitude of downtime when dealing with the CIPC. So we value that, we value that relationship and we value our, our modernization journey. The big thing that I want to discuss today is the implementation of a new payment system. Um, you all know for many, many years, we've been utilizing what is called the declining balance system when you deposit monies into a CIPC account and if you feed off that account to receive services from us in the payments of fees. Uh, we have, uh, over the years, received a lot of negative feedback from the Auditor General in our auditing process to say that we are not a deposit-taking institution. So we have been working very, very hard uh, with our banking partners, uh, working very, very hard with our development team, and working very hard with our finance team in order to come up with new innovative ways of servicing the payment of fees to the CIPC. And we're going to be utilizing a card system fully. You know that we've rolled this out with the BIS portal system and other services in CIPC, but now we're going the full gamut of services. Some might say fortunately or unfortunately, but at the end of the day, it is something that is taking us in our next wave of innovation. And we are, 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 are moving fully into, into the, 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 the basket system and the payment of services using cards. So uh, I'm sure one of the questions that you will ask of us, and I have Mr. Louis Muller from Finance later on who will be dealing with some of these issues and these questions, is what if I have money in the, in the, in the, in the my customer account already? So we have put together teams that will be dealing with refunding of those particular funds. Um, we uh, ask you to be patient with us as we verify some of the information that we are required to do so in order to have um, a, a positive feedback when it comes to uh, refunds, but uh, be rest assured that you will be getting all your monies back. Uh, CIPC is not in the space of keeping what is not theirs. So uh, we will work through that as speedily and efficiently as we can, and our finance team will certainly be putting out a lot of communication in the coming weeks in order for you to address those queries and for you to receive that. We'll also have a lot of queries from um, other stakeholders as to how do we process the card system efficiently, especially if they come from regulated uh, professional bodies like attorneys and the like. Uh, we'll also be addressing some of those concerns. But uh, be that as it may, we are moving fully into this enhanced platforms. Uh, we're going to require to use your debit or credit card as a payment method, and unfortunately, we'll be shutting down the declining balance uh, uh, system going forward. Um, so throughout the course of, of this morning, we're going to be dealing with aspects in this particular webinar. Uh, please feel free, free to ask as many questions as you like of our managed team. Uh, they have worked over a long period of time to get us to the place where we can uh, release in the next week our enhanced services to yourselves. Uh, we know that we're going to be dealing with a lot of queries. Uh, we'll be dealing with a lot of communication from the CIPC side. We're going to be releasing a lot of videos, how to do videos on the various aspects of our new services. Uh, we're going to be releasing a lot of guidelines and uh, 
and, and ease of doing business, uh, 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 frequently asked questions. And we're going to maintain over the next couple of months going forward as much uh, communication methods and uh, strategies uh, to make sure that you receive all the requisite information that you require in order for you to have a seamless experience with our new enhanced services. In closing, um, we firmly believe that uh, the continuous improvement culture and vision that I've set for the organization becomes entrenched. It is a permanent fixture and feature of, of, of what we do. Uh, it is part of our corporate culture in order for us to make sure that uh, we have made positive strides to attract investment in South Africa by an ease of doing business um, destination. Uh, we make it easy for our business community to access us and to grow their businesses as part of what we do. In the next year, one of the big strategies that we're also going to be un, un, uh, rolling out and unfolding is in the area of data management and analysis and the utilization of CIPC's data because we have a wealth of that particular data, especially for the third-party decision-making processes. So look forward to some of our communication around that and also to utilize some of our services. Um, we value the fact that we have a lot of... Um, a lot of stakeholder engagement with our public and our private partners. Collaboration is one of our core values, so uh, feel free to uh, seek out any assistance in this particular area, especially when it comes to the area around how do we as a collective receive the services from CIPC in order to grow the economy and to make sure that we are, are, are servicing you in the way that, 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 that you desire of us. Uh, we see our customers as our strategic partners, not just somebody for which uh, accesses our services. So we value your feedback and are continuously saying that and continue to maintain that. Our system can only be as good as the feedback that we receive from you. You know, sometimes when you're a bit inward looking and you try and do what's best for customers, we sometimes might miss the boat. I never, ever shy away from the fact that we will get some things wrong. And when we get something wrong, we value the input that we get from you as our clients in order for us to improve on that particular service and in order for us to enhance the particular service. I know many of you are having a lot of issues when it comes to uh, query resolutions, and we certainly will be placing a lot of emphasis on our query resolution system as well in the coming year in order for us to have enhanced methods of how do you deal with us when things go wrong. Um, and, and to receive the requisite uh, response and attention that you deserve and you desire in order for, for you to receive that. So um, we're going to try and minimize disruptions. The reason why we're rolling it out in December, um, you must be also asking that question, is because uh, historically, um, from the closing of the schools and the start of what is regarded as the festive period or season for the country, CIPC services uh, in terms of volumes decreases. So it gives us an and, and, and it gives us ample opportunity in order for us to uh, to work, continuously work on the system if there are glitches. And I am 100% sure because I've been doing this for a long while, there will be glitches. There will be teething problems with the system and we will certainly pay the requisite attention. My development team and my managers are continuously working throughout this particular period. They continuously are, are, are on standby and we will continuously, even during the closing period, um, dealing with enhancements or glitches or technical uh, issues that might arise. That's just the nature of the business, it's the nature of technology. As you saw from the start of this particular webinar, I tested my mic two minutes before we started and it didn't work when it came on. So that's just the nature of, 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 of how things are. But we never, uh, we never shy away from the fact that we always strive to do our best and strive to give you the service that you certainly require. So with those few words, I want to wish you all a peaceful, very joyous and a safe festive period. Um, we look forward uh, in the coming year to servicing you even better as the CIPC. Um, we never shy away from the fact that we will get something wrong, but we always have the intention and we always have the culture built in the organization to, to, to continuously strive to innovate and continuously strive to service you better. So with a few words, I thank you very much. I leave you in the capable hands of my managers. I will also be listening in to make sure that um, uh, your, the questions that you ask of us is uh, enhancing the experience and enhancing your interaction with the CIPC. Thank you very much, and have a, have a great webinar. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Mishnah. Um, I am just going to share our presentation again quickly, and then I'm going to hand you over. 
um, to advocate Krista Kloko. Thank you very much, Krista. I'm just going to switch off my camera. I know we're all struggling with load shedding and residual load shedding. So, all right, so once again, good morning, everybody. Um, I am Krista Kloko. I'm the senior manager responsible for companies and close corporations at the CIPC. So in my component of the presentation, I will be just taking you through some layout changes of how the e-service is going to look like. The, the look and feel is quite dramatic, as you can see from the screen in front of you. And then I will just go through the area and indicate what has changed. Most of the services are going to be identical. You're not going to see from an experience perspective any changes. But in some areas, we've made quite a lot of changes um, and I think you need to be aware of it. The purpose is not to take you into detail of every single service. Um, Tabocha will take you through a demo of some of those services, but just provide you with an overview. All right, so once you have logged in, you will have got your first page. Um, so after you've logged in, um, the login will change in the sense that you'll use your ID number and your password to log in. And then you'll have basically your landing page. So it's very specific. So um, the terminology that I've uh, allocated or indicated here is not the precise wording. This is just to make it in my mind easier when you talked about, about the different components. So you'll have basically a customer dashboard that will consist out of the quick links, which is the most the services that are mostly used. You will see there, for example, query, you'll see annual returns, new company, some statistics. Um, and then also some customer transactions. So that is basically the quick links. Below that, you will see the enterprises that is associated to your profile. What we mean by that is if you are the intermediary, it will not display. This is actually linked up to the ID number of the customer that's logged in. So if there's a compare or a link, the ID number of the customer appears as an active director or a company secretary on a company or a close corporation, then this will appear. Not that you have done a transaction in the past, it will be there, it is linked up to your ID. Then on the further side, you'll see your customer details. Sorry, I've just blocked that out. Popia is in full force, especially in CIPC. So we're trying to provide respect to be respectful to re regarding uh, private information and also security protocol. I think we all have experienced our data floating around in the economy and none of us actually like it. So that is the main three components. Just above that customer dashboard component, you will basically see the service categories. You'll see register an enterprise, maintenance of an enterprise, and then disclosure. So those are the broad service categories. They actually coincidentally also respond to the e-service, uh, our static website. Just above that, you'll, that will look familiar. That is our enterprise search. We've now brought it back into e-services. Um, some of you may know that a while ago, because of Poppy, we removed enterprise search and put it onto the BIS portal. We bring it back onto e-services. Next to it, query logging, and right next to it is your cart for where all your payments will reflect. All right, so after you've got the main dashboard, um, for this instance, I chose business maintenance. Once you've clicked on it, you'll see the full service offering that's associated under that category. I'm not going to go through it. It's quite a lot. And as new services come about, it will be added into those three broad categories. Right. So I've then, for the purposes of this presentation, I clicked on company and CC um, address changes. What will happen once you've clicked on it, you'll have an explanation of the nature of the service that you've accessed. Please read it. Um, it basically gives you the background of what's the purpose of an address, for example. Right below that is very important disclaimers. Please remember that anything that's submitted to the CIPC, and we found that it is fraudulent information, it's a criminal offense to submit incorrect information or misinformation to the CIPC. And we are at a point whereby we have streamlined our business operation to some extent where our focus has now shifted on compliance and enforcement of our legislation. We take it very seriously, and especially with you as intermediaries, you need to make sure from your clients when they give you the information, put necessary measures in your own, 
own regard and your own office in place to make sure that that information is correct. Because we're going to ask you, if we picked up a, a concern, we're going to ask the person that submitted the information, prove this to us, especially on electronic services. Then right below that, dis, uh, not the disclaimer, but um, the little, the wagging of the tail, is actually your associated services to the service. So you'll see your new filing, your certificates, your step-by-step -step guide, and also your video. We don't, I think we just have to just indicate that um, we are still focusing on finalizing the functionalities. So they will be with the launch. The step-by-step -step guides may not necessarily be available in time, but as we maintain, we will add those into these categories. As the commissioner has indicated, we're also doing some uh, busy with some videos in this regard and will be posted on the site as soon as they are ready. All right, so let's dive into um, the changes. So the next one after the um, after you've selected like new services, you're going to have like two options to choose or selecting the enterprise for which you want to file. Again, you've got the your little dashboard component. That is all the entities that are linked up to your ID number of the customer, right? So it will be listed there. You'll see uh, some information. You'll see a compliant button. That's your AR compliance button, by the way, to indicate whether you're complying. And then if there's a little hand, it means you can file for it. If you, for example, an, att uh, an attorney or an accountant that does this service on behalf of your client as, as your package of service that you provide, you will then use option two whereby you will then type in the registration number and then it will activate or put you into the service in order to continue. Right next to it is the guidance and tooltips. Please read them. They will give you guidance as how to use the particular functionality or the website. Um, unfortunately, we can't put everything in there, but the key matters that we believe is necessary for the functioning will be there. And if we pick up through our inquiry system or engagement that more information is needed, we will put it on there for you. Right, so that is just a brief out on the layout. So um, I think let's dive into the services. As I pointed out, um, the purpose of this presentation is not to go into detail, but basically just indicate some high level changes. So on the company name service area, you will have the following service available on the Enhanced e-services and Biz Portal. It's the proposed name, your standard name reservation. That's the one where there's no documentation required to as evidence that the name is associated with, with a group of companies or another person. Um, name with association or manual names, that's the process whereby you would have emailed your evidence um, or to say that you're allowed to use the name, especially if it's for professional services or, um, or, or it's got some key words in it. We call it name with association. Um, I know that's, that's not the legal name, that's just how we term it within CIPC. Then you'll have your name extensions and also your name transfer. For this purposes, defensive name reservation extensions will still run on the, uh, on the mail, name reservations and registrations at CIPC.co.za until we have migrated that service onto the e-platforms as well. It is hoped that this will be on the next um, launch of services because we would really like to standardize all our process into the same area. From a business perspective at CIPC, it's very difficult to try to remember on all the platforms that you have different services. And if you can imagine, we maintain the front end, the websites, the biz portal, we try to maintain the email addresses, we're trying to maintain the back ends, the more system components we have, the more difficult it makes our administration. And then those that are been wondering, um, the name reservations with association that is All right, so let's kick start where we were. <laughs> All right, so I think this is the last point uh, before we had technical challenges is those that will remember we've experienced some technical problems some couple of weeks ago with our associated name reservation. And um, unfortunately, we couldn't install that module on our manual systems and we had to deactivate. That functionality will be now be brought online on the e-services and the business portal components. That is the name with association. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, just to reconfirm, we will be posting this on Facebook and, um, and YouTube. So even with the technical difficulties, you will be able to access it afterwards. 
Right, so let's quickly dive back into names. Let's hold thumbs. All right, so on the names area, um, the system will have proposed names, name with association. That's what we call uh, proposed names whereby evidence must be provided as to that the name is associated with another profession or contain some key words like uh, financial services or protected attorney, etc. Then we'll have name extensions available and name transfer. It should be noted that defensive name reservation extensions will still run on the mailbox name reservations at, uh, and registrations at CIPC.za, but it will be phased out hopefully in the next phase of the launch. We would like to simplify and standardize our processes and minimize the amount of different applications that we have in running the different services. So those that have been eagerly awaiting the launch of or the bringing back of the service for manual name reservations or name of association that was decom that was shut down due to technical issues a couple of weeks ago, that will now be available with as the name with association on our e-service and this portal functions. You will not be able to use do that service via the name reservations at registrations at cipz.co.za service. All right, um, then special characters. Everybody's one of those favorite topics on names. So as you know, in the past, we have only had some key special characters available on our services. And the main reason for that is we were mindful about the fact from the big stakeholders of the bank, like the banks and such, had concerns regarding that these special characters may have translating coding language implications. So we have launched more special characters with this service. We will monitor it carefully to see what's the impact of that special characters. We are hoping or hopeful that it will actually not have any coding impacts on services and databases of our bigger stakeholders. Then just to note as well as that we have still going to have the auto approval component. Uh, for those that are interested, we do about 50,000 to 60,000 name reservations in a month. With a small handful of 14 people, it's not possible to search and approve every single name. So we've brought about the auto approval. So if your name is not auto approved, it will mean it will be referred to the back office for search and approval. And that is going to slightly cause a delay. We are not going to tell you what the rules are, which ones front end or back end. Um, that's our little trade secrets because we have picked up that there are people willing to abuse the auto name approval system in order to get names approved that may be problematic in, in the public domain. All right, just a few tips on names. It is on the little tool tip or guidance component. Please do a free trademark search first. Please note we have, in South Africa, we have got very aggressive trademark owners, even though you may not, or the smaller business may not actually be in competition with them, they are highly protective of components of their name. So please do a trademark search. Remember, trademarks has got like 45 categories um, that, in a, uh, that a trademark can be registered in, but it's good to know what it is. Then also just a browser search. Remember, not all businesses have are physical. Some of them just runs on the internet. So it's good to go have a search. They also have got right to their domain name name so please do that and then of course an enterprise search of companies close corporations and co-ops right on new companies we have basically the same service available as before as in the next phase we are want we want to bring about public company state-owned company external company registrations we want to automate it uh, those we will not be able to fully automate. They will go into a hybrid process whereby the MOIs will have to be uploaded for us. But on the current services, it will be the short standard private company with or without name and then the short standard not-for-profit without members company. And please note that NPCs must have names in terms of our legislation. You cannot have one without a name, so the system is going to force you now to have a name. And then also the MRI or registration certificate download. Then for the automation that we have brought in on the new company's environment is for foreign nationals. So these 
short standard where you, in the past you would have emailed the signed documentation in, that will be phased out. It will be fully, fully, fully automated. Once your name is approved, it is done and dusted after payment. It is only when the director is a foreign national that you will have to use the foreign assurance service first, whereby you will, um, in order to, for the foreign national to be verified, and then that person can be appointed as a director on a company. Um, a little bit later, I'm going to just give a little more detail about the foreign assurance service. Right. So, some guidance quickly. So, after the registration, the welcoming letter, the MOI and the certificate will be emailed to the customer. Um, you, will, you will also be able to download it under the certificate options. It's very important to note that due to Popia and, and privacy laws, this first set of registration documentation will contain the full ID numbers of the directors. This is to enable to open up the bank account and go to search for tax further tax registrations. Any certificate there, all right, so anything else, the, the ID numbers will be masked. If you need the full set with the ID, you will have to log a disclosure request and specifically say you are the director so you can get the full unmasked papers. The customer who submitted as well as the directors may be able to download for free for 30 days after registration the documentation with the ID numbers masked. Thereafter, it will be 30 rand um, after the 30 days. The reason is CIPC is not company's record keepers. Yes, we keep the information for other services, but companies must take responsibility for their own information. Also, new companies, directors may not share email or contact details. You will be blocked. We know that a lot of companies and intermediaries, you put your own contact details on for that of the directors. Please do not do that. Directors must, must now be verifying their own cell phone numbers and email address via OTP. So please make sure that if you are planning on today to do the new company registration, make sure that that specific director is aware that you're going to do the registration today for them to provide you with the OTPs via the email and cell phone number. The reason why the cell phone email numbers are so important is that we are phasing out post. And your clients keep changing hands. The directors must receive the notifications and then the director it's up to them where how they want to delegate directors can never abdicate their responsibility especially towards the crpc that they need to know what's going on in their companies then also just a reminder about the director responsibility and obligations uh, training uh, our portal it's a very nice one please do advise your clients before they start their business to actually go and go through the learning um, that e-learning. It's very easy and very useful. Right, just a quick update on foreign national assurance. Again, foreign nationals will have to update us beforehand. They do that by filling out the online form with some key information regarding themselves, or regarding their passport or their foreign identification document. They then upload the certified copy and it must meet our certification requirements as set by 1 April this year. And the Back office will then assure the information and then authorize. Once it's authorized, there will be a communication issued, and then this person can proceed to be appointed as a director on a new company or an existing company. All right, we are starting to make progress and, spe and speeding up. All right, so that's new companies and names. Let's quickly go into our changes and amendments environment. So the following services will be available. Company location of records, that's a new service that we've brought online. Uh, company and close corporation address, which is an existing uh, financial year in changes, which is existing company change of name, existing shares, existing. And then you will be able to download your confirmation certificate. Please note that if I filed as the customer the information, I'll be able to access that confirmation certificate. Um, Let's say Louis or Alma now wants to go and download that confirmation certificate because they didn't file it, they will not have access to it. That becomes a disclosure request. All right, so the confirmation certificates are only available for the person who filed it. All right, so let's quickly jump in some major changes on company name changes. Um, we've heard as the commission that we've listened on uh, not all directors will receive the OTP for uh, changes. Up front, you will choose who will need to get the OTPs, and the OTPs will only send to that selected director to authorize the company name change. 
location of company records. As you will note, uh, as soon as the system goes live, every web disclosure component which gives the summary of the information will now contain the company of location of records on the disclosure certificate. So let's say, for example, in the case whereby this company has never filed a location of company records, that component will then reflect the same as the physical address because that's technically where the records are kept. What we have done, location of company records, we've gone through section 26 and we've broken it down to the different components and you'll be able to select which one of those components can be kept at a different site than the actual physical address. All right, annual returns. Um, on annual returns, we I think this is the biggest area where we've made changes and it took us a, quite a while to do that. So the, fully, so the following annual return services will be available, annual returns, a PI score, an AFS, FAS, confirmation certificate, and the AL calculator will be brought into the next phase. Please note that all of these look like one services, but if they've got different purposes uh, in the CIPC information management spectrum, and therefore not all of them like AFS and FAS is not administered by the annual return team, but by another by our comp voluntary compliance unit, but we work together in order to address it. We're trying to, the front end to make it easy for you, although the data is managed by a different component. All right, so the PI score, first question is why? It is actually a legal requirement that on any returns, the, legal, the PI score must be provided. Um, as you go into the PI score, it will be different to but depending on the type, those that are quite familiar with the regulations on PI scores, they ask a slightly different questions for NPCs and for profit companies. This information, together with the financial information tab, will be used to determine whether an AFS or FAS must be submitted. We have realized that a lot of companies that are actually supposed to file AFS are actually filing FAS. So we are now going to force you to file the AFS based on the legal requirements and and asking a few questions. The turnover on the PI score, we've tried to make it a little bit easier. That will be pre-populated at the end of the annual return for one uh, where payment is made. We did the same with the employee information on the PI score. We've also pre-populated that for you on the, another new component, which is the AR statistical information tab. And then PI score information is also then a standalone option for filing purposes. Right, as I indicated, uh, we have brought in a financial information tab. We will be asking the legal questions regarding AFS and FAS to determine which way um, your filing needs to go. You will not be able to proceed with your AR component unless the AFS or the FAS is, comp uh, is completed. I want to remind you again, it's a criminal offense to submit false information to the CIPC. So when your MLI of your client or the company states it must be audited and you click on the questionnaire, the MLI doesn't require it. It is a criminal offense. And we are going to hold the client that submitted the information liable for that information. Again, please make sure that your clients provide you with the correct information that you submit. Then we have also another key component we've brought about. Um, it's also a legal requirement. And after many years, after a decade of asking for it, it's finally arrived. My wish list on annual returns. You will now be able to make your changes while filing the annual return. So after your information tab, we will display to you the director, the address, the financial year end, the location of company records, audit information. And you will then have to confirm whether it's up to date or not. If you say it's not up to date, the system will reroute you to the relevant change component. You will complete the change, then go, and the system will reroute you back to the annual return to proceed with the next step. Once you have paid for your annual return, all you will get all the certificates that is associated with it. So you'll get your annual return. If you made a change of address, it will be the address. Please note, address change only happens after your effective date. You will not get the notice immediately. Um, and direct us a check. And if I remember my presentation correctly, we've got one more tab to go. Then we've also added statistical information. Again, this is on the published annual return forms. We will now ask whether you are dormant or active. Which province are your primary business activities, your industry, whether you're a holding company and your number of employees? The reason for this is as CIPC and as the commissioner has alluded to, 
third party users of our data wants more and more accurate and up-to-date information for decision making. We get interesting requests from other government departments to say how many companies on your register is actually active or within this province. At this point in time, we cannot really give it to them. We can actually give it through collecting the data through annual returns and to provide a clearer data updates for them. Then we've also simplified the filing confirmation in the past. If you had filed five annual returns, we would have repeated the information five times on a certificate. For now, we have it's going to be a single one, only for the current year for which you filed, and the turnover will be displayed on that certificate. The reason is, is that our legislation has changed. It is public information. It's in the best interest of the, uh, of, of the public to know what the turnover of companies are and that's why it is disclosed. If you don't want your turnover to be disclosed, you need to request a confidentiality, a confidentiality request um, where after it will be considered, but because it's in the public domain for this information, you need to provide very good reason why your turnover information must be protected. And that's the end of the company side. Um, Thank you for your patience and again, our apologies for the technical difficulties. Have a great morning and afternoon. Thank you very much, Krista. With that, I want to hand over to uh, Mr. Bujani Mkorkla, that he can continue with the overview for directors, members and practitioners. Thank you very much, Bujani. Thank you so much, Helma, and uh, good day to everyone. And thank you, Krista, for the comprehensive uh, presentation. Um, being mindful of time, I will uh, do an overview um, so that we are able to attend to all the issues at hand. Um, so our presentation will focus in terms of uh, what we are going to do. Um, firstly, I, uh, the release will focus on director member changes as well as the auditor changes. Um, the supporting documents is very important that people should note that where the process is fully automated, they must keep the supporting documents so that when they are required, they are able to furnish uh, anybody with that particular documents, be it CIPC or other relevant uh, authorities. And um, as Krista has mentioned, um, we need to be mindful that the information that you provide with CIPC should be the most accurate information um, from the company. Um, this um, new e-services is going to provide us with um, the quicker way of doing the director changes um, and it will be fully automated. And um, the straightforward appointments and resignations uh, those ones will be fully automated as long as uh, they are done <coughs> by directors or company secretaries of the company. If any third party is uh, doing a transaction on behalf of the company and they are not a direct part of the directors or company secretary of the company, then that will go to the back office. In terms of the new appointees or the people that are resigning, they will be required as well to confirm their appointments or resignation as uh, this is an area that is <clears throat> a very uh, uh, controversial in terms of uh, unauthorized changes. And therefore we have put in place as we are improving our services to ensure that uh, everyone is aware of the changes that are taking place. And uh, the directors concerned, they know exactly what is happening. And uh, as part of the process also, we are doing uh, uh, the verification in order to comply with Regulation 168, which requires us to ensure that we take reasonable steps to verify the people that are transacting with us, as well as the documentation that we receive. For all applications that have to do with the removals or court order related applications, those ones will go to the back office. Currently, the volumes are very low with regards to those applications. So the majority of applications, we believe that they will be done uh, within a short space of time as, as soon as the directors concerned, they respond to the OTPs as um, my colleague will do the demo to show you. 
then the transaction will be automated. With regards to auditors, uh, it's the same. Uh, only directors and company secretaries that will be able to do these um, applications fully automated. And uh, in the event that uh, the auditor is a firm, currently, because of we have to implement this, the first phase, we had some glitches and we then uh, took a, a, a compromise position to say, we need just to communicate to, to the stakeholders to say, you will find difficulties in resigning designated auditor in a firm because the system is still, the, the, the developers are still trying to find out how to uh, differentiate between the firm and the designated auditor. So what will happen then will enable you resign the firm and reappoint the firm, the very same firm with the new designated auditor. And uh, on the system, it will guide you in terms of how to do it. And there will be even um, uh, information that will remind you of how the process works. But come to the second phase, we'll have ample time throughout the, uh, the holidays and figuring out how to then ensure that we do not uh, temper with, with the firm and just deal with the a designated auditor where such uh, appear. So the commissioner has, has, has made mention of um, the CIPC continually striving to improve our processes and I would not belabor at the point. But what also we have also added was to ensure that whilst we are easing, um, we're, we're improving on the way of doing business, we also ensure that um, we embed the, 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 the compliance imperatives on, on our processes. Hence, I mentioned uh, also Regulation 168, particularly when it comes to verifying uh, the people that are filing with us. And the issue of OTPs, it's also a, a, a reinforcing this to ensure that uh, we do not uh, get the, the complaints that we're getting and the backlash that we normally get to when there are court battles between between the, 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 the parties that, that um, don't see eye to eye. Uh, so we'll have OTP so that people will confirm, people will approve their own applications. If there's a stalemate, then there will be then uh, proper forums to deal with the stalemates without using CIPC as a, a place where they can remove and place people without their knowledge. So this, this process is aimed at, at addressing that. All right. So Krista uh, mentioned the, the verification of foreign nationals. And uh, the commissioner also did mention that we, we operate with, with um, uh, other stakeholders and our approach is collaborative approach as we do the verification with home affairs. However, as he has mentioned, it is not going to be a problem when the home affairs is down. We'll continue to process in the background and do the verification at the later stage. Thank you. The, as I've mentioned, the approach now is to make it a point that we have the directors, members, and auditors there. Um, the licensing and the appointment of business pra uh, practitioners will be migrated from the current platform to the new e-services. So there won't be any any changes. It will just be on the on this new platform. And uh, the second phase is to look in terms of company secretaries, representatives fine-tuning the auditors and also the accounting officers to ensure that um, we cater for all the, 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 the relevant uh, amendment processes that has to do with this. And as we have said earlier on, all complex transactions will have to go to the back office, but the main focus is to improve in terms of our turnaround times. We know now it takes approximately a day, but we believe that with these new changes, it can be in a uh, nick of time will be able to do this and that's what we are striving for thank you very much for your time uh, let's take the last slide yeah so these are the benefits that we have identified quick turnaround times the prevention of unauthorized changes the reduction of administrative burden reliable data and also it will be cost effective as um, there won't be too much of, of this thank you so much uh, for your time uh, and head over to back to you, uh, Elma. Thank you very much, Vujani. I'm going to hand over now to Mr. Louis Muller from the Finance Unit. Thank you, Louis. Uh, thank you, Elma, and thank you, Vujani and Krista. 
I think let's just dive deep into ours as yes. I think on the payment solution, there's a lot of questions with regard to people, what happens to the, to the balances. But maybe let's start with the introduction. These services, as we modernize our, our service platforms, we also modernize our payment stuff. So the old traditional way where we normally you would have a declining balance and people will transact based on the balance available. And as the balance depletes, they will top up those balances. Those balances will no longer be available for services uh, on our new platforms. So therefore, meaning your transactions, which you will be, we, we, which will be transacting, will be a card-driven process as such. Um, for us specifically, then that would be specifically for your debit and your credit cards on our side as such. The other one is also we're looking at ways that that we looked at the efficient way of our side. So. By the change in the payment method, when, when we're changing the payment method, we're also enhancing certain services on our side as well. So it's a one-to-one -one transaction. You get the service immediately. There's no delay in the service. And also the fact that you use a debit or credit card will assist you in making a decision. You don't need to budget or top up an account at CIPC, have a cash flow issue with it as such. Now you pay per the transaction, per the services, meaning there's no delays in that transaction as such. And also we're making sure that the customer, we're looking at customer centric. We're looking at how the customers, how we enable and how we support our customers as such on service delivery as well. Because mostly customers want, would like to have a final product at the end of the business, not deal with the financial issue such on our side. So once we looked at this enhanced payment solution on the CIPC side, we're looking at how do we make it more efficient for our customers? We're looking at specific ones that says, we're looking at the transaction, the ease of doing business in the comfort where you are, at your house, at your business. You don't need to go into a bank. We're looking at those type of services as such for CIPC. So for us is, we looked at the, the historic transactions that we had. We looked at the volume of calls coming in. We looked at the volume of inquiries from our customers. And once we looked at that, we looked at a more efficient way as the commissioner alluded in the beginning of the presentation. They said we looked at a more efficient way of doing services. And also as he alluded, that we're removing red tape in certain transactions as such. So for us is once we move to this new payment system, we want the customer to have a seamless transaction going forward so once a trans the customer transact it's a seamless process till the end of the process so by doing so we are making sure that we don't have the volumes of calls logged with us so that is something of the past for these services we're looking at your incorrect references those will automatically fall away we're looking at the real-time transaction meaning you pay for the service which you receive and you pay for the service directly. There's no way for somebody still to build a transaction. It's an automated process and it's more efficient and on the process as such on our side. The, the process that we're following on these card payments is, is secure. So it means we having a secure portal, first of all. So the customer will be directed to a secure portal. So also the transaction will be instantaneously as such on our side. So for us, the main focus would be, and I know this is where our customers will come to and say, what happens to our balances and this? I think we'll address those ones just two slides down that side before people start getting agitated to understand as to what will happen with my balance, how will I be able to use it? We'll address those ones just going forward on our side. So the main thing for us is to look at how smooth or the ease of business of doing business to our customers. So these card payments would be a debit in the credit card. First of all, second of all, the transactions on our side will be ensured on our side. We'll make sure the customer does not need to register at CIPC, register his card details or any information as such, because we will direct the customer from our webpage into a secure uh, payment gateway, whereby the customer will then be able to transact on those ones. And then also, this is as the commission alluded, it will be a basket approach, meaning the transactions, you can basket them different types of services, and you will be paying at a the checkout point, which we direct you into those payment as such. However, we must actually uh, allude to our customers that says transactions, which is not completed by 12 
midnight, the evening will not be processed. They will automatically fall away, meaning you'll have to start the process from scratch, meaning that those transactions will no longer be in the cart available for payment as such. On these payments, we would like to also uh, make sure that our customer is aware that they must ensure that the that the uh, cards are 3D enabled or that it's been activated at the um, service providers or financial service providers such as the banks to make sure that they will be able to do online shopping for those services as such. And also we would like our customers to familiarize yourselves with our terms and conditions because with payment comes certain terms of, uh, terms of conditions with us as such. Read them through before you start completing your transactions as such. And also, all customer-related disputes or inquiries should first be handled at the CIPC, meaning if there's an issue with the card or a, a problem with the card payment as such, please feel free to contact CIPC first. That's the first line of communication. Second to that, we want to ensure that we will be able to assist the customer in resolving the issue than rather the bank because it creates a complex issue on our side as such. And then moving forward on these ones, it is just for us to ensure that once we do these transactions, we want to ensure that we ensure that the customer is, has, has a, a seamless process and the customer is satisfied with the transaction itself. But the most important part for us is to say what type of cards will be used. So currently we will be only accepting Master and Visa cards. American Express and Diners are unfortunately not yet available on our side because they are seen as international cards. So all cards that we will be accepting is Master and Visa cards at the present moment. So we will be looking at different ways and means to look at other payment methods in the future, but it's not for these ones as yet. But what we also want to exp uh, ex uh, express is that says all these card payments that we use, the, that we're moving from a declining pay, uh, uh, payment method to a card, a debit card, credit card payment method would only affect our services in the company's environment space, meaning all our services which will be logged on on uh, the e-services and our biz portal. All those type of services will be card driven as such for us going forward as such. So for our side, it's what to, to, to remember. You don't need to register your card details. One, two, you will only use Master and Visa cards. No Diners and American Express cards. Those are the most important parts for us. And then also, uh, there's normally a lot of questions surrounding the balances of our customers. Customers would like to know what happens to the balance, how do I use the balance. And for our side, for ours, it's just such, you can still use the balance in other environments, but not for our e-services and our portal as such. Then the other question would be, um, who can use the online payment solution? Everybody can use the, paper, the online payment solution, but it's mainly built for our e-services and our business portal at this stage. So on our side is we looked at how quick it's going to be. So all those services will not be deposit driven. It will be only card driven as such on our side. So for our side is for our terms, the intents of purposes is how long does this payment last for customer in? So the minute the customer is directed to a web page, the service and the transaction will be then concluded and that will be the end of the transaction. So what we've ideally done is a streamlining a process for our customers as such to look at more easier ways of refunding them. So we look at the process of we look at the process of a streamlining the, the process of refunding our customers, which would like to have the deposits refunded because they will be user, utilizing a car payment system on them. So uh, we have two pro, pro processes on our side. So we look at transactions older than 60 days. We'll have a straight, a simplified process on our side, meaning the customer will only be verified by his details as such. No documentation will be required for them as such. The second one would be then for customers less than less than 60 days will then be required to submit all relevant documentation as such. So on our side, it's just to say that the normal refund process, which is defined and it is attached on our website, will then apply for them. But keep in mind, 
we have a CIPC has a responsibility also to select certain transactions for audit purposes or for review purposes before we refund those ones as such as well on our side. So for us, is the key takeaways for us is what we want to look at. We look at issues of the customer will be depositing, will no longer be depositing, my apologies, no longer depositing. The payments will be card driven on the e-services e and bus portal. The second one would be that the refund process, how do I get my money back? The simplified process on our side, that which I explained, and then the normal process on our side, should the customer uh, need to submit all relevant documentation on our side. We are aware that some of our customers is still continuing deposit depositing large sums of cash into those accounts, and we would like to caution them as well on those process. We are allowing uh, this quick, uh, easy way refund process, and we would also like them to discourage them from depositing future larger amounts on us. If you need to deposit money, use deposit money as you're going to be transacting them. Do not deposit more than what is required at the CIPC because that will create another additional administration for you to submit the a, a pr proposal or request for refund. And with that comes a bit, there will be a time delay between two or three days with the refund process on our side. So our refund process will be straightforward. You will log on to a query uh, to our system on our QRS system. The automatically there will be a pop-up screen, meaning you will automatically be directed to fill in your details and we will already verify your details electronically. If the deposit is less than 60 days or greater than 60 days, based on the requirement outcome of that, our customers will then be directed to fill in their normal banking details based on that once they've submitted those ones we will then process the refunds at the back end on our side however those process will not be automatically processed it will take between two to three days or two, two to, to five business days depending on the type of transactions we're looking at and also if the transaction has not been selected for audit purposes as such so for our key takeaway is card payments will be used on our new platforms on the bus portal and e-services. Uh, thank you, Elma. Thank you very much, Louis. Um, we are going to do a demo, but before we do that, yeah. I just want to make anybody who do not have the links for the platforms aware of the um, URL addresses, so for e-services, you'll see it's https uh, colon to forward slashes e-services.cipc.co.za and for this portal, um, it's bizportal.gov.za. With that, I'm going to hand over um, to Teborho Masakali for a demo and I am going to stop sharing the presentation so that he can share uh, the demo. Thank you very much to Borho. I will be showing you how to process a company registration application with the CIPC. I'm going to be taking you through that demonstration. The first step that you would need to do is to navigate to the e-services application you would then need to log in into the application. You will use your ID number to log in. You will also use the password that you have used to register with the CIPC. If you look on the top left hand side of the main of the screen, you will see the business registration menu. Please click on the business registration menu. On the left hand side of the screen, you will see the company registration menu item. Please click on that. You will navigate to the bottom of the screen and then click on new registration. You have an option to use an approved name you have an option to apply for a new name and you have an option to register a company without a name. I'm going to be applying for a company 
with a new name at the same time. I'm going to be selecting the apply for a new name option. You will then ap apply for the names that you would like for your company. You have an option to choose between one or four names. That will be your choice. I am going to be applying for one name on my application. A tick will mean that your application could potentially go through an automatic approval process. I'm going to submit my name reservation application. You will then be able to select the type of company that you want to register between a private company and a non-profit company. I'm going to select a private company. You can then click on the continue button. You will then be given a form to capture the ID number of the director that you would like to be linked to the enterprise that you are registering. To your postal address, if it is the same, or type in a different address. After you have completed the form, please click on the Save Director Details button. You will get a tick with a green border around it indicating that your director details have been edited. A red cross will mean that your director details have not been edited and therefore you will need to edit them. You can click on the continue button when all your director details are green. You will then be required to put in the SMS OTP and the email OTP that will be sent to all the directors that need to be linked with the enterprise. After you have received the OTPs, please capture them onto this form. Click on the verify button. If all your OTPs are correct, all the buttons for SMS and email will be green. If there is at least one red indicator, you will not be able to continue with the application. Click on the continue button. You can then capture your company details. If your postal address is the same as your physical address, you can click on the copy button, else you can type out the information on the postal address section. Verify that all the information on your form is correct, and then click on the continue button. You can now pay for your application. Click on the checkout button on the right hand side. Please read the terms and conditions for the payment that you're about to make and click on the agree button. Please use any debit or credit card that has a CVV number at the back. Please put in the expiration date of your card and your CVV. Verify that your information is correct and click on the payment button. Please do not close this page until you receive a notification that your payment has been completed successfully. Sometimes it may take up to just over 20 seconds to get a response from the bank. After a successful payment, the CIPC will then process your transaction and you will receive an email with your registration documents. If you look through your email, you would have found that there is a 
company registration MOI, which will contain your welcome letter, your 14.3 registration certificate, your 15.1 memorandum of incorporation, your 15.1A, as well as your disclosure. If you have applied for a company registration and a name at the same time, you will also receive your name reservation certificate, which is the 9.4. We have now come to the end of our demonstration of how to do a company registration application. I will be giving you a demonstration of how to file an annual return with the CIPC. Please navigate to the e-services application and then click on the login button on the top right of your screen. Please use your ID number and the password that you have used to register with the CIPC. Click on the login button. Please navigate to file annual returns on your dashboard. Alternatively, you can go to the maintenance menu, business maintenance menu. On the left hand side, please click on annual return filing. Navigate to the bottom of the screen and click on new e-filing. You will be given a list of the enterprises that are linked to your ID number. You could either file an application utilizing the file button that is on the list of enterprises that are linked to your ID number. Alternatively, you could type the, I, the enterprise number of the enterprise that you want to file an annual return for. In this example, I'm going to be typing an enterprise number of the enterprise I want to search for and conclude an e-filing on. Click on the search button on the right hand side. You can then click on the continue button. The first step is to file the, the PI score. Click on the calculate button. Capture the details in relation to your PI score. Click on the Calculate button. Your PS score will be calculated and you will then be navigated back to the annual return dashboard. Your PS score will be shown to you on the right hand side of the screen. I'm now going to fill in the details in relation to financial statements. Please answer the questions in relation to financial statements accurately. Then click on the continue button below the financial statements section. The system will determine whether you are allowed to submit an FAS or whether you are allowed to submit an EFS. In this example, I'm going to be submitting an FAS. If an AFS cannot, FAS cannot be filed, it will be grayed out. The system will now navigate to the FAS page. Fill in the form.
click on the search button and then continue filling out the details on the form. When you have completed filling out the form, click on the submit button at the bottom of the screen. The financial statement section will then be collapsed to indicate that you have submitted your FAS. I will now move to the director's section. In this example, I will make no change. I will now move to the address changes section. In this example, I will make no changes. I will now move to the financial year end section. I will make no changes. Please, however, note that if you wish to make changes to your financial year end, there will be a fee that you will need to pay at the end of your transaction. I will now move to the location of record section. I will make no changes. The last part of this form is the statistical information. Please fill out the details on the statistical information. You will not be able to recapture your number of employees and your number of shareholders. This information will be retrieved from your PI score. If you don't have green buttons on the left hand side, you will not be able to submit this application. Please ensure that all your sections have the green button. You can now move to the end of the form and click on the continue button. You will be redirected to the outstanding years which the annual returns have not been filed. In this particular example, there are two outstanding filings for annual returns. I will be required to capture the turnover of all the outstanding years. The turnover of the current year will be taken from your PS code. You will not be able to amend it. Please ensure that the turnover that you have captured on your PS score is correct as it will be final. You can then click on the calculate button. The value of the fees that you need to pay for your annual return filing will be indicated to you. You can then click on file annual returns. You will be redirected to the shopping card. You can click on checkout on the right hand side in order to make your payment. Please read the terms and conditions and click on the agree button. You will be able to use any Visa or MasterCard. Ensure that you have a CVV number at the back of the card. You could use a debit card or a credit card. I am now going to capture the de details as on my credit card. Type in the expiration date and your CVV. Confirm the details of your card and then click on the payment button. Please note 
it might take 20 seconds to process your transaction. Please do not lose this page until you get a result of your transaction. Our transaction has been complete. You can now navigate to your email and you would have received documents from the CIPC. I would have received my financial accountability statement. I would also receive my annual returns certificate. Please note that if you made any other changes, such as location of records or a member amendment, you would also receive documents from the CIPC for further processing. We have now come to the end of the demonstration of how to file an annual return with the CIPC. Thank you for watching. You can also read or download an easy to follow step by step guide on how to submit an annual return on the following links. Should you have any queries, you can contact the CIPC through any of the following channels.